that's currently underway. Let's go there live. Fantastic work in facilitating productive social cohesion dialogues. And it has also intervened in some of the specific incidents of racism and xenophobia. I would like today to thank members of this panel for their service to the people of our province. Madam Speaker, let me also take this opportunity to thank the Sports Trust, the African Diaspora Forum, SAFA, as well as the Hellenic, Italian, and Portuguese Alliance for organizing the annual Premier Social Cohesion Games, which are a powerful statement against racism and xenophobia. The exceptional support of soccer legends such as Dr. Kumalo, who is in the house today with us, Tebo Homuloi, Kennedy Makara, and Kalusha Bwala, as well as the, uh, the work of outstanding patriots like Maurizio Mariano and Stavros Nicolaou, has been great on these issues of social cohesion. <laughs> the annual Houghton Social Cohesion Carnival now attracts more than 50,000 people who participate in this festival in the capital city of Tuan. These are people from, rich, from different and rich, rich, reflecting a different and rich diversity of our province. We are encouraged that these men and women, black and white, young and old, are heeding the call to build bridges and foster national unity and patriotism. According to the latest quality of life survey, which has recorded significant improvements in progressive social attitudes and high levels of tolerance amongst the people of Gaute. We also continue to honor the heroes and heroines of our nation who have contributed selflessly to our freedom and our democracy. Aware that sport has the power to contribute to nation building and social cohesion, the Houghton government also continues to invest in the development of different sporting codes in our schools and in our communities. We are proud of our sporting achievements. In 2016, Houghton won the school sports winter games and further won the national schools championship summer games in 2018. Let's give our children a big round of applause. More than 200 young athletes from different schools in Gauteng represented South Africa in the International Tricolor Games in July in 2018 in Italy. And they won gold and silver medals for our nation. This is the spirit of Gauteng, the home of champions. Spirit. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate Banyana Banyana, particularly the captain and the coach who have joined us today for their spectacular performance in the CAF Women's Africa Cup of Nations and for qualifying for the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup. You have represented our country very well and you carried the fighting and resilient spirit of South Africa's women on your shoulders. Shine, Banyana Banyana, shine. <laughs> Fellow human beings, please join me in conveying our unequivocal support to Casta Semenya. <laughs> our reigning 800 meter Olympic and world champion, who's facing yet another humiliating case against the International Association of Athletics Federations. Casta has been humiliated too many times, and yet she refuses to give up. Her crime is that she's an African female athlete who is too good. Her life is an embodiment of the triumph of resilience and excellence over, the, over adversity and humiliation. Today, the people of our province must join hands in, in supporting Casta in the campaign hashtag naturally superior in her battle against the, I, the, the, the IAAF. Casta's humiliation must end now. Let her greatness reign. Malbongwe Gamalamakoskas. 
spirit. Gauteng is also the creative pulse of our beautiful continent of Africa. According to the South African Cultural Observatory, the total cultural creative employment in South Africa accounted to 6.72% of all jobs in our economy. Gauteng in particular accounts for 146,729 jobs in the creative sector. And this is 37% of the national jobs created. We continue to attract and host major creative industry events, which include book and art fairs, design festivals, film and choral festivals, jazz and hip hop festivals, food festivals, and as well as our own community lifestyle festival, Makelwan. Kauten's creative spirit, infrastructure, and ecosystem has enabled many talented young people to flourish on a national and global scale. Who are those young people? Trevor Noah, Black Coffee, Kaspar Novest, AKA Tutupuani, Zamantunga Kumalo, Questa. Sile Tope, Tembi Hatana, Hutacho Munjani, Lyle Foster, Stephen Pinal, Casta Semenya, and Nelson Makamu, the latest, South Africa's latest edition and the most revered African in, in art who has ever appeared in the front page of the Times magazine. And Nelson Makamu is here with us today. Honorable members, these are the jewels of our nation. These young people are the jewels of our nation. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to hold some of these bright and talented minds of our nation for lunch, for a conversation with them over lunch about the future of our province. They have a daring and fearless attitude. They shared with me their views and aspirations on matters of culture, education, entrepreneurship, the township economy, and the role of the creative industries. They want to contribute to the growth and transformation of our, the economy of our province and the larger economy of South Africa. And many of them are here today. I saw them here. Madam Speaker, allow me also to convey our heartfelt congratulations to the multi-award winning Soweto Gospel Choir and the Lady Smith Black Mambazo for winning Grammy Awards this year. Let's give them a big round of applause. This is the spirit of our creative people in, our, in South Africa and in Kauteng. Music lifts the human spirit, brings people together, and enriches their lives. In particular, gospel music underscores the power of prayer and the joy of faith. Amen. I would like to acknowledge religious leaders, the men and women of God, for the work they are doing in enhancing the spiritual well-being of citizens, as well as in fostering human solidarity, tolerance, love, in the, and peace in the world. I call on religious leaders to work with government in tackling some of the harmful and shameful religious practices that brings God's name into disrepute. Such practices really give religion a bad name. We want to work with religious leaders to tackle such practices in our province. Madam Speaker, the public health care system in our province faces tremendous pressures and challenges as a result of in-migration. In the eyes of many citizens, our health care system also faces a crisis of believability. I have heard many stories during Interesano from citizens who have gone into our public health facilities never hoping to come out alive. This is an area of profound challenge in terms of service delivery, and it needs to be fixed now. The financial and structural challenges facing the public health care system are receiving both national as well as provincial attention. 
More recently, President Ramaphosa announced measures to address the urgent and pressing matters in public health care across the country through the Economic Stimulus and Recovery Plan. This includes addressing some of the shortages in our hospitals, making funding available to buy new equipment and linen, as well as filling critical medical posts. Over the next five years, we'll continue to expand the primary health care system by increasing the absorption, absorption of community health workers in the public health system in our province. Despite many challenges, Houghton's health outcomes are improving. The average life expect expectancy has improved from 54 years in 2006 to 64 years in 2018. The average life expectancy has improved. The, the successful rollout of the antiretroviral treatment has drastically reduced the transmission of mother to child in our province to a level of 0.68%, which is close to the 0% we are working for. Our primary health care system is also working well. Gauteng has the largest number of clinics, that is 75%, that meet the national core standards of an ideal clinic. This ideal clinic is a clinic that is clean, opens on time, it's well run, have reduced waiting times, and have high rates of medicine availability. This is an important achievement even as we go through big challenges with our healthcare system. Fellow compatriots, the life as a tragedy represents the opposite of what we are about. When heartlessness and big-headedness creep into public decision-making, saving lives and saving the people take a back seat. This must never happen again in our government. The people must always come first. Once this heartbreaking tragedy happened, we took responsibility and put in place corrective measures to fully implement the recommendations of the Health Ombuds Professor Malekhapuru Mahoba. We also appointed the retired Deputy Chief Justice Dikham Museneke, who went through a painstaking and painful process of presiding over the arbitration and ordered our government to pay financial compensation to the affected mental health care users. We have moved swiftly to pay all the claimants by June 2018 in line with the award of Justice Museneke. Currently, currently, we are working with the Office of the Master of the High Court to ensure that the new set of claimants who came after the award was given by Justice Museneke are also paid. The main concern of the Master's Office has been to ensure that the government pays the rightful person in each family and that the interests of the mental health care users are protected. That's the role of the, of the Master's Office. This is what has caused delay, which created some consternation amongst the families who, who have not yet been paid, which is the second category of families. I am happy, though, to report to this House that an amicable solution has been found between the provincial government and the master's office, together with the affected families, on how this remaining claims can be settled speedily, and this shall be settled speedily. Law enforcement agencies are hard at work to ensure that justice is done. Those who have broken their oath and the laws of our land shall be brought to book on this issue of life as it demand. Honorable members, one of the issues I have raised consistently is my concern about the leadership and capacity of the South African Police Service and other law enforcement agencies in our province to deal decisively with crime. It is only, it is only through heartlessness, honorable members, 
honorable members, it is only through heartlessness and big-headedness that some parties can ignore the pleas of affected families not to use tra the, the tragedy of life as a demand for point scoring and political campaigning. It's only through heartlessness and, and big-headedness that people can ignore such an appeal. Okay, the State of the uh, Province Address currently happening in Alberton, Gauteng State of the Province Address, uh, Premier giving uh, a sense of, you know, some of the challenges in Gauteng and some of the achievements, uh, mentioning among other things the healthcare system and uh, saying that this province is one of the leaders uh, in terms of primary health care system. And he, he says yep. we have the highest number of clinics, 75%, that meets the highest national core standard of an ideal clinic. Of course, also in the room are uh, uh, EFF uh, members who've uh, consistently come up to interject mm. uh, to uh, just dispute some of the things that he's been saying. So we'll look at yeah. uh, the speech and it's the address in its entirety yeah. once uh, the premiere completes. Yeah,